What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to write some uh, groovy melodies for your bass line. Uh, our scale we're going to use is E Phrygian. For those who don't know music theory, um, to explain it fast, it basically lets us start from E and work our way up the scale using all the white notes. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a website that I use quite often to find scales since I am not that good at music theory myself so so I'm gonna leave the link to you guys and share it with you um, it's been super helpful for me at least so I hope it will be the same for you guys um, so anyway let's uh, audition the loop we're having right now So as you can hear, I mean, the bass line works, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's kind of boring to have a straight kick and bass. Um, and an easy way to, to uh, like, different yourself from, from, from this standard approach is to just experiment and, pl and play a little groove uh, with the bass line. It does a, it does a lot to the track. Um, a little tip, or not a tip, but how I like to do it is, I'm kind of a lazy, lazy guy, um, which means, <laughs> and that means that I don't, when I write my melodies, I don't change the first note. The reason being, it's going to fuck up the phase for the kick and bass. There are tons of videos on phase alignment and how to fix it and avoid it and yada, 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 yada. So I'm not going to go into detail about that, but uh, as I write my melody, you're going to notice that I don't move around the first note in the kick and bass, so which would be these ones. So let's get right to it. Uh, what I would start is I would, I like to work in sections when I create my bass line group. Uh, the idea I have is this whole loop that we just listened to is 16 bars. And I have an idea where we're going to have a fully functional 8-bar loop. And then we're going to have the same loop, but a little differently to this one. So it's going to take 16 bars before we loop back to the beginning again. Um, I never tried it before, so we'll see how it goes. So uh, it's quite easy. We're going to start over here. So I'm going to loop this section. So yeah, let's say I'm happy with that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my loop. goes a little bit too fast there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and go up with that one
to go, I think like F, A, and maybe a G over here. I think that's kind of cool one. So I'm going to copy these over to the last two bars of our first eight bar loop. And we're going to have this like a little, like a little, it's going to not be so dense this uh, first bar of the second loop. Let's see what we have now. I'm gonna play from the beginning again. And I think I'm going to copy this one over here. And um, I feel that I rushed a little bit for making it a little bit chaotic. So I'm going to move them down to make them even more dense. that this one I think they can be straight here in the in this in this one actually <laughs> and then we need to change this one And this one doesn't feel right. I don't know why. I think it's because it's go, go it goes up there. And I feel that these guys, they need to move over here. And then we're going to move this one and this one over here. Cool, I'm happy for now with that. So notice that I started a lot from going from the top to the bottom. I think this one needs to do pretty much the opposite. So, which means I need to start over here and this one needs to end at A, G and F. This one goes from F to G instead. Cool. So this one doesn't feel right either. I think we need to make something like this. And 
I'm not sure if I like that one either. So yeah, that's our little loop. Uh, it's maybe not the best one I ever made, but uh, it's a lot of trial and error when it comes to this, actually. If I've played around with multiple different patterns. This one I created before. <laughs> I mean, it's very similar. I'm just using the same keys, which is E, F, G, and A. Um, just has a little different vibe to it. And here's another one that I experimented with. It's a little bit more static. Um, it's just this one that is looping uh, over and over again. And then I had this one. So yeah, that's a little bit about how to create some um, simple melodies and groove in your bass lines. Um, a little disclaimer, I'm not, uh, not that good at melody writing in general. So uh, maybe there are certain better ways to do this, but uh, this is how I work and my workflow. Um, and what I don't like that much is, let's say, because I've seen a, a lot of people, they, they, they spread the notes all over the place. And sure, theoretically it's going to work because it's in, within the scale you're playing, but the vibe is completely different uh, compared to the style that I'm used to making. So let's ha hear an example of how it's going to sound if I spread them out even more. <laughs> It just doesn't feel right to me. Um, it doesn't sound bad, but considering the vibe with the rest of the sounds that I have in my track, it just doesn't feel right. Um, and music is all about feeling. Am I right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, as I said, it works theoretically, but it doesn't necessarily vibe with the track you're making so i prefer this style uh, where it's a little bit more narrow within the note spaces just sounds better to me um, it's all about test taste in the end so yeah um hope you learned something um and as i said if you're having trouble with creating melodies uh, or finding a scale that you like, check out the website I'm going to leave in the description. Thanks for watching.